all sorts of world-class advice on remodeling your homes, your kitchens, your bathrooms. We cover all sorts of disasters around the house and how to make all sorts of repairs. And we do tool reviews as well. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, you definitely want to keep up with the latest here. So click that subscribe button down below there. And then after you do that, click the little gray bell icon. That way you won't miss a single video. And remember, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. So anyway, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the saddle valve. Now, this is a saddle valve right here. And what this saddle valve does right here is when you buy a new refrigerator, a lot of times you, you have an ice maker and your ice maker line will plug into this saddle valve. So what happens is the installers get really lazy instead of doing it the proper plumbing methods here to attach your ice maker line onto a, a water pipe here. What they do is they tap into a pipe somewhere close by and they'll take this off here and then they'll take your quarter inch ice maker line here, the hose, and they'll screw it right in here to the side of the saddle valve here. And once they've done that and tightened it down, they then start turning the, the valve handle here and they'll keep turning it and turning it until the needle in there pierces into the pipe. Last summer, we put up a video on the four plumbing parts that you should never use. And this saddle valve was listed as one of them. And you wouldn't believe the hate comments we got from all sorts of people, handymen and from plumbers who have been installing these for years, trying to tell me I'm wrong and trying to tell me, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. Even though we showed the actual plumbing code where this is a violation of plumbing code to use these saddle valves here in virtually every state in the nation. I've even had plumbers leave comments saying, hey, you know, uh, I'm, I'm in such and such state and in my state they allow them here. And I'd immediately go to their state's plumbing code and pull it up and paste it right back into the comments at them. So yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. These are banned in virtually every state in the country. You're not allowed to use them. Otherwise, you won't get approval for your building permit. Now, if you want to cheat and you're not getting a, you know, a building permit and, and it's not getting inspected, you know, that's your business. But I'm, I'm just saying on any new construction or any remodel that's getting inspected by the city, their inspectors, if they see this, they'll put a halt to your work right off the bat and they'll fail you and you'll never get your building permit signed off. All right, so I'm here to help you folks here. I'm not here for the plumbers. I'm not here to drum up business for the plumbers by scaring you into anything at all. I'm here to save you money. I'm here to show you how to avoid expensive, multi-thousand dollar insurance claims from a, a leak from these saddle valves. And your insurance company, if they find out you have this, they'll reject your claim and you won't get any money at all. So that's why in this video here today, we're going to show you two alternate methods to hook up your ice line to your water pipes here without having to use a saddle valve and without having to call a plumber and they're legal there within code and they're very inexpensive and they cost less than ten dollars okay so this is method number one here and we call this the valve adapter method here now let me just show you most of you probably have a valve under your kitchen sink that looks like this on your cold water here so it's very simple it's it's usually a half inch compression here with a 3 8 inch diameter there and then you take your hose here, this is gonna go up to your faucet, right? So you're gonna screw this part here. Now the other end of your hose, which looks like this, goes up top to the faucet. So that's why there's no way to hook your ice line up to it. Well, we have a part here that can help you do that. All right, so this here is called a valve adapter. Now this particular one, it allows you to add a quarter inch compression outlet um, onto your existing valve here. So let's see how this works. Okay, so here's what the part looks like close up here. So it has a 3 8 inch diameter thread on one side and a quarter inch thread on another side. And this is the adapter nut here that allows it to adapt onto the existing valve coming out of the wall. Okay, so this is about a 7 or $8 part. Very well within reach for most people. And it's such a quick and easy adapter to use. And I will put links to Amazon to all of these parts that we're using in the video here for you. So you can examine them on your own. Okay, so we will unscrew the hose off of the valve now, exposing the 3 8 inch output. And then we'll take our valve here and we'll screw that right on top of it. So we have our adapter is now screwed in nice and tight here to the valve 
And now you can see what you have now. You have a quarter inch coming out this way and you have the standard 3 8 inch coming out this way because remember the hoses are different size. The hose needed here for the faucet has to be the 3 8 inch diameter here. So we'll screw him up top here. And then your other hose for the ice maker line here is going to be one quarter of an inch. And we'll screw him right up here. And there's your solution. Okay, so now you take a step back and look and you can see this, is, this fits the bill here. It does everything we need to do. It's perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with using that fitting there. And how long did it take us to do this? 90 seconds maybe? Do you need to call the plumber to do that? No. Am I working against you and just trying to get you guys to call in plumbers and spend money? No. So all of the, the bad comments we got from the previous people on the previous video uh, just goes to show you that they are all wrong and what we're trying to do here is help you do things correctly. This is one correct method here. Did you ever wonder why saddle valves are banned? Why can't we use them? Why don't they want us to use them? What's wrong with these things? They look like it makes sense, huh? What could possibly go wrong? Well, I know what the problem is, okay? Now, if you take a close look here, this is our saddle valve, and let me show you where the problem comes in. Because when you first put one of these on, I mean, these look gorgeous. They look brand new. It looks like a great piece of artwork, doesn't it? Okay, so here's what it might look like after you just put a saddle valve on, on the, your pipe there. Now, what do you see wrong with this picture? Do you see anything wrong there? Okay, now a plumber probably isn't going to understand what's going wrong there because plumbers are not chemists, okay? So, now that you've had a few seconds to think about it, let me clue you in as to what's wrong here, folks. What is this copper pipe made out of? Duh, copper. What do you think this is made out of? Some cheap brass, maybe, or some type of cheap white metal, they call it, and, and it all comes from China? What do you think happens when you put two different types of metal together here, folks? This is called dissimilar metal contact. And it causes a problem that's known as electrolysis, where what happens is the, the atoms or the electrons, whatever you want to call it. So what happens is the molecules from the two different metals there, they start merging with each other. They start doing cross-family marriaging, stuff like that. And it causes corrosion. So I'm going to show you a test saddle valve that I created six months ago and just left it out here on our backyard porch, not in the rain, under where it was dry and covered for six months. Okay, so this one right here is the saddle valve that I installed on a piece of copper, just like we did with that one. And this has been sitting out since July of 2019. So here we are, January of 2020. And you can see how just in the humid environment, look at, look at what's happened to the screws already. The screws have started corroding. Now, if these break, guess what's gonna happen? Your saddle valve will snap off. So that's another failure mode. But if you look closely here, uh, here's the flaw in their design. So they have that black piece of plastic there along the top. And this one has it too. See the black piece of plastic there? That sort of insulates it. Um, it insulates the top of the saddle valve from the copper so it doesn't contact it. But on the bottom, it does contact it. And so you're going to start to get corrosion right here where the two meet here. Okay, so here we are looking at the underside of the saddle now to get a close-up look. And you can see the corrosion that's already started there. See all the rust that's forming there? Everything I mentioned in my previous video where I talked about why you don't want to use saddle valves, it's true. Here it is. We've proved it. This could be in the environment down in your basement. If you have a basement that collects a lot of water or leaks a lot, you have a lot of humidity in there. You may not know it's there, you can't see it, but it's there and it all rises and all that air, all that air moisture is going to start attacking your pipes and, and anything that's got, you know, multiple fittings here like this. And so you can see how much longer do you think it's going to take before that starts to corrode through the pipe there and now you have a leak coming right there. And let me just turn this around and show you multiple angles of it. You can see, look down in there, right, right there where the two metals connect. See, it's, it's already starting. And not already started, it has started and it's just eating away at that copper pipe there. So this is why you don't want to use a saddle valve. 
And everybody that wants to say, oh, they work great, there's nothing wrong with it, they haven't had to deal with the insurance claims and all that and the deductibles of thousands of dollars. And nowadays, the insurance companies are getting smart, and if they see this saddle valve, they'll just reject your claim altogether, and they won't pay a single penny. I already know two people that are suing right now to try to get money from their insurance companies over leaks that the insurance companies don't want to pay for. What's funny is you go into your big box stores to buy your ice maker lines there, and what do you think they have in the package there? They got the saddle valve, so people don't know. Oh, hey, the manufacturer is putting that in the package. It must be okay. I don't know why the manufacturers are so stupid and, and give you that. They, they got to know that it's a violation of plumbing codes in, in every state. Why would you give that to somebody when you know they shouldn't be using it? Another question we get asked all the time from people are, okay, Jeff, if saddle valves are not allowed to be used, if they're a violation of code, how is it that the stores are allowed to sell it? Why aren't they, you know, why don't they get in trouble from the law? That's criminal, isn't it? I mean, and I guess people just don't understand the difference between building codes and criminal law. It's not a, against the criminal law to buy these, own it, or install it on a pipe. It's against building codes which means the rules that the, the cities use before they agree to give you a, a closeout on your building permit, it just violates those rules and they won't give you a building permit. They're not going to call the cops and have you arrested. There's no law being broken. So it's perfectly legal to sell these. However, I think it's perfectly stupid to sell these. Now, there are times where this would be okay to use, like if you're going to be outside doing something temporary, or you just need to get, get something temporary to, to fix something or whatever. But usually temporary fixes, from what I've seen from just about everybody I know, a temporary fix is permanent. You know, you come onto the scene 10 years later when there's a failure of some type. What was that on there for? Oh, that was supposed to be temporary. When'd you put that on? Oh, 10 years ago. Okay, so this was solution number one. So now I am going to show you solution number two here which is actually my preferred method of doing it. Okay, now this is my preferred part, and we'll take it out of the bag. I'll show you how, to, how this sets up. This is actually a dual valve, which is my preferred method. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we'll take our one-stop wrench here, and I will disassemble this real quick. Okay, and then what we do is we take that valve off. Of course, you have to cut off the water supply first. Okay, so here's the part close up here. Here's how it works here. So the water comes into this big nut here, and then you have two separate independently controlled ports here. Now, these might look like they're the same, but they're not. What's really cool about this, this is a very specific part that's designed exactly to do this very purpose. This is a 3 8 inch diameter port here. This port over here is a quarter inch port. That's the one that's made to connect up to your ice line, whereas this one is made to connect and go upward to your, um, up to your faucet there with your faucet hose. We take that valve off and we put on our dual valve here. Now you can see uh, what our dual valve looks like. It's really nice here. So we're going to put the nut back on and then the ferrule sleeve, the compression. Okay, and that's going to fit around. The valve goes right on the pipe. And then we'll tighten this back down here. I'm not going to do a full tighten like we normally do. I'm just going to put it just enough on here to hold it in a position for you. Normally we would really tighten it up good, nice and tight. Okay, so here's the, what I like about this is if you look at the way this whole valve operates here, each side is independently controlled. Okay, so now as you look at the, the two, here you can see it's more evident that the one on the upper left there is wider, it's the 3 8 inch one, and the one on the bottom right there is the quarter inch valve. It, it's sort of a luxury item, but I think it's the ultimate in versatility because it allows you to do work on the refrigerator and the ice line without affecting the rest of your water supply. You don't have to cut off the water supply. All you have to do is turn off the supply to that line. Okay, so now what we will do here is we'll screw on the hose here that leads up to the faucet. He'll go here. 
So remember, that's the 3 8 inch connection. Okay, and then on the bottom here, we'll attach the quarter inch hose for the ice maker. So I'm just going to keep reiterating for you so you remember it, that the, the faucet hoses are usually a 3 8 inch connection, and the ice maker lines are always a quarter inch connection there. Okay, so there's our completed solution here, and you can see why I like this. It's such an eloquent solution here, mainly because I have individual control over each side. I can turn, see, I can turn this side on here or off independently from this side over here. So if I have to do work on the refrigerator and the ice maker line over here, I can just simply, uh, well, yeah, this would be on here. I could come and turn this one off while still leaving the faucet on so people could still wash dishes, do whatever while we're doing our business over here at the refrigerator. And, and the other reason why I love this part so much over the first solution I showed you with this valve adapter here is this valve adapter adds one more layer of complexity. It's one more source of potential leaks or problems to go wrong, uh, things like that. And um, they could still get bumped around. Uh, see how it sort of does have a little swivel to it there? So it could get bumped around by people shoving stuff underneath the, the kitchen sink there. Whereas this is a single piece. It's all solid. There's no other moving parts other than just your, your two cutoff valves. And it's 90 degree turn. So everything about this is just perfect. See, 90 degrees from off to on there. 90 degrees, just like that. Now, the only issue here about solution number two here is it is more expensive. I mean, you can tell this is a, this is a Rolls Royce part. Um, this part can cost anywhere from $20 to $40, depending on where you're getting it from. And once in a blue moon, you might find it at Home Depot. You go in and you ask about it, and they'll give you blank stares. Most of their employees don't even know what this part is or does or anything. And then if you go to supply houses, they might cost 20 they might cost 40 You just don't know. The prices are all over the map. But to me, I'll pay the price. I don't care. Because when I'm doing my remodeling and we put these new valves on like this, to me, nothing looks better than when a buyer and their home inspector come in and the home inspectors look under the sink and they see this beautiful brand new thing that's very well organized with the hoses going in the right direction. There's not hoses going all over the place because they had to use these weird adapters and stuff. It's just everything is just routed neat and perfect and they can't argue with that. There's no, they'll never find anything wrong with any of my plumbing fixtures here that would ever give them any cause to to try to chisel down the selling price of the property. Well, I hope this clears up any confusion you had about saddle valves. And if you're finding this video useful so far, hey, make sure you go ahead and give us a thumbs up down below here. That tells us that you like us and it helps our videos rank better so other people will find it and benefit by it also. And remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button down below there and click the little gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be alerted every time we upload a new video. Well, thank you so much for joining us with this one, folks, and we hope to see you on the next one.